Hello everyone. Welcome to the HSPF training by DSI. This is video HSPF 520 reviewing the sediment erosion parameters that we populated in the last video. So let's look at the UCI file. Okay. So we'll directly go to sediment uh, palm 2. Okay. So this is uh, for the operations 101 to 508, all the operations. All of these, these parameters should change according to the land use and the land use practices. But right now I'll just go ahead and explain uh, what are these. This is for the supporting management practices. This is the erosion factor. If you look at um, the K factor, uh, when you uh, in the soils uh, soils uh, data in the USLE equation that you can use that for getting started. Two is an exponent. Uh, I'll just explain it in a minute. Fx is that uh, every day when the sediment gets eroded and then it, uh, then it gets uh, after the erosion process is complete, whatever the loose soil is on the surface. It settles back so by th for example here by three percent of that soils gets fixed back cover is uh, you can have uh, cover changing by uh, every land use every month uh, so let's do that quickly so I go to functions and input data editor Berlind sediment set palm one. It says uh, the sediment palm one. It does not exist. I want to add it. Yes. CRVFG means that the cover of the land use can change throughout the years. Uh, you might want to make it one, especially for agricultural areas. And in some cases, you might want to keep it constant for the entire area. VSI VFG is how the net vertical uh, sediment input can can vary because of wind erosion you can change it throughout the year or you can keep it constant and this is the algorithm for the sediment erosion so what I will do here is for agriculture cropland I'll just change it to one and agriculture partial change it to one so I have changed it for only two operations click on OK close and I will save it so as you see the set palm one got added and two of these operations 106 and 108 have this cover changing by every month but we don't have that table yet so we'll go back again functions input data editor Berlin sediment mon cover monthly cover it says it does not exist i want to add it yes it adds it by automatically for all the operations so i'll just click ok it says zero cover for all of them and save it and it's zero cover for all the parameters now this two is uh, as i was talking about earlier is the exponent in the equation so what happens is when rainfall occurs sediment gets dislodged from the matrix from the soil surface now this equations equation determines how much the sediment gets detached from the surface the terms in this equation determine how much of that gets transported these are these are erosion related parameters these are transport related parameters and they should obviously vary by the land use and kger would be gully erosion so in some cases in agricultural areas with high slope or so not agricultural uh, forest areas with high slope you may want to change it so that there is some kind of gully erosion so that's for the uh, Poland operations uh, for the implant operations, they are same. It's 
there is no uh, erosion happening from the surface, but there is some kind of assumed that there is some kind of sediment available on the uh, surface on the impervious land, and some of that gets lost every every time because of the street cleaning that may be happening, and or some of them the sediment might be coming because of wind or nearby activity from other land areas and this gets transported. Now one of the things if you have noticed here that the, the surface, it, the sediment erosion is happening on the surface and it is being transported from the surface. So if you have set up parameters so that there is negligible surface runoff occurring and all that water is moving through interflow or groundwater, then no matter what you change the parameters for transportation and for soil erosion, there will be no sediment erosion from that land use. So you have to always think sediment erosion as uh, after the uh, hydrologic calibration and just see how much uh, runoff is happening from each type of land use before uh, playing too much with the parameters for sediment. So then we move on to, uh, to reach res. So this is bed width and bed width is like how wide the bed is. It is for HSPF it is kept as constant for the entire period of simulation. But when the uh, sediment is depositing, it deposits on this in this case 16 feet, 16 feet uh, wide bed. In general when it's upstream reaches you want to make it smaller and for downstream reaches you want to make it uh, larger. This does not affect too much in the, in the uh, sediment erosion calculation or TSS concentration but it uh, helps you figure out this, the, if the, your uh, system is stabilized or not uh, when you are doing simulation and checking it. Bed warning is 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 a artificial warning when if you are uh, if you are depositing too much sediment and the bed uh, depth becomes too high, then HSPF prints out a warning. In this case, it's hundred feet, and then you can set up different warnings to to check for that. And porosity is used when the sediment is deposited on the surface, and it is used to calculate how much volume it will take. Now sand PM is the, are the parameters of uh, sand that helps you determine how much uh, transport of, sedi uh, of sand is happening in the, in the river. And these, these exponents, you, you can keep it same or because sand is really a, a very smaller part of the erosion in general in the reaches, but uh, sometimes you may have to, you have to change this. In some cases, when you are uh, connecting the HSPF to no another models, so you may want to change this uh, um, the diameter and, and the settling velocity based on uh, what your assumptions are in the other models too. So these are just default that, that uh, WinHSPF has set, but these are obviously wrong because this is uh, silt clay PM is uh, for the silt. This is the table one and the name is same. It could be confusing, but the first one is for silt and the second is, one is for clay. Uh, so if you see the diameter for, this is, has been set up same for the silt and clay both. Settling velocity has been set up same and rho is also, density is also set up same. So you may want to change it. Tau CD is the critical shear stress and so if the shear if the shear stress at that point is 0 0.1 uh, pound per feet square it will deposit if it is uh, more than 0 0.3 uh, silt will erode and for the for clay you generally have to go and change it for every individual reach and for that in, to do that you have to make sure that your HSPF uh, is simulating hydrology reasonably well and then you have to go back and, and uh, extract this uh, tau value from each one of the reaches and get and calculate what are the reasonable uh, 
values for shear stress for a certain claim. And so these are the main parameters that you have to set up. My recommendation is first you uh, set up the land parameters reasonably well and then you can go and do uh, calculate the loading rate make sure that the, if the loading rate is correct then you start with the reach parameters so what i will do in uh, next video is that I'm, I'm still not going to be changing the parameters and do the calibration in the videos here but what i will do is i will use hsp xp plus to generate some of the reports that may be helpful for you in uh, understanding what parameters need to be changed. So see you in the next video. Thank you for your time.